So guys, it is a huge honor for me to introduce all of you to Dr. Perry Nicholson. Welcome, Dr. Perry. Oh, thank you so much for having me on the show. I was telling you before, I absolutely love the name of the show. Congratulations. It started on a good note. I was proud of myself for coming up with this name. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a great name. I love it. You know, I mean, that, that says a lot. I think, though, um, science be one of the most amazing things that we actually have at our disposal for really guiding our thinking. Um, one thing that I keep coming back to with a lot of the people that I talk to is that it's almost catching up with what nature kind of already had as a foundation for us for a long time. Um, and I think I was listening to a couple of podcasts with you talking about the medical world in particular and how they're extremely focused on the right clinical observations backing up uh, what they do and how they do it. But at the same time, um, there was so much that we're missing. For example, I know one of your huge passions is the lymph. Um, before I digress too much, though, and we get onto mm. this topic, which I think is very important, can you please just introduce yourself and especially your incredibly fascinating journey to get to where you are? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, I mean, I was getting all excited when you were talking about that because um, this is the stuff that I love to to chat about. And the hard part for me is that I could just keep talking. So you have to make sure you cut in every now and then next thing I know you hit the flow state and I'm like, it's been 40, it's been what, four or five hours now. Um, but yeah, well, my journey to where I am now with uh, stop chasing pain, which is the name of my brand, it was formed because that's what I was doing. And, and that's what people who were coming to see me were doing. And it wasn't working very well. Um, so there's a difference between treating pain and chasing pain. Huh? You, you know, sometimes when you treat where it hurts, stuff gets better. And that's awesome. That's an easy win. But with what humans are going through today, that's not working very well. So I, I wanted to stop chasing it and begin to honestly start thinking, I don't even like to use the term better, I like the term different. Start thinking differently about what we're doing and then what the body is trying to tell us about why it may be doing what it's doing, which is ultimately to protect you and keep you from dying right now. That's the goal. So you should thank it right now that you're that you're not dead because it's hard to heal when you're dead. And so that was my journey. And, and just like the name of your podcast, it kind of fit. And people told me, said, you know, that's a, that's a really great name. It kind of makes a lot of sense. I'm like, I know, right. And it just resonated. And it became a passion of mine because I got, honestly, I kind of got a little, I got very frustrated just treating pain and I got bored mm -hmm. quick, fast in a hurry because I'm like, this is all there is. And people weren't getting better. And if they did get better, here's the thing. I've always been in the search for why don't they stay better? Yeah. Why, why does stuff keep coming back? Because you're telling me that it's supposed to, I don't buy it. <laughs> it's, it's a different thought process than, than people that just because you're getting older means you're going to have more of dot, dot, dot. I completely disagree with that. I think you're I moving too. further. You're, mer you're moving away from the whole total premise of nature. And mm. what the body is designed to do, which is to heal itself. And that's been my mission ever since, which is honestly not to teach people what to do per se, because listen, that changes for every single person. It's always different. Of course. I'm trying to teach people to become empowered by thinking differently. N I don't believe in a right or wrong thinking process because either one gives you information to know which way you should go do more of or do less of. And then that right there automatically takes the pressure off somebody or the polarization that you were tending to a little bit before, which we'll get into. Does, does that make sense? What I'm trying to explain? A hundred percent to Perry, but something else that I really wanted you to touch upon was um, when you were diagnosed with cancer and I know that you worked through that and you also then discovered the lymph. And I think that part of your story is particularly inspiring, A, because it brought you to where you are now, but also because I think it offers such a huge ray of light and hope to so many people out there. 
Oh, I'd be happy to share that. Yeah. I mean, people always ask me, how did you get into what you're doing now? And I'm like, well, probably like most people through a lot of pain and suffering, because that's typically the only thing that forces people to change because why would you change if you're really comfortable? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I'm really happy right here. I mean, you'll get bored kind of fast and then some, you'll try to make something happen. So you have a little bit of excitement, but um, yeah, about 20 years ago, the journeys connect now that I know more, or at least in my own thinking process, they do. 20 years ago, I had thyroid cancer. I woke up one day and I had a goiter on my neck. So think about that. You don't just wake up one day with a goiter. You do, but you don't. I mean, it builds what up. What is that? What is a goiter? Yeah, a goiter is basically where goiter. you have a like a golf ball size, sometimes tennis ball size lump on the bottom of your throat or in your throat Whoa. where your thyroid gland sits in your neck. Mm -hmm. And when you have a tumor or a growth on there or the body's trying to protect something, it can swell it. And then a goiter... Uh, I noticed it at that time and then I had to go get it checked out and then they check and feel on there and they're, okay, we have to go get some more tests and it turns out to be um, malignant cancer in the thyroid that was most likely developing over a long course of time. It doesn't just pop up overnight, um, even though it appears that way. And then they had to go in and remove the thyroid gland. And at the time, which I didn't think anything about, a significant amount of the lymph nodes in my neck and the lymph nodes are part of your immune system that are designed to help keep you alive. And they kill all the bad stuff that you don't want to have inside of your body, including cancer cells. But they had to take them out, which they often do when somebody has a tumor, if they've if the cancer is. Uh, travel to a lymph node, or if they're concerned that the cancer can travel throughout the system via the lymphatic system, which it certainly can. But the, you know, they sealed me up and then all was good. And they put me on medication because without the medication, I'd be dead in a couple of days. So I need it. Wow. But I've just went back to my kind of same old approach to what I was always doing in healthcare, you know, treating musculoskeletal pain, going back to training and working out without really stepping back and trying to say, okay, well, that's, that is telling me something, right? Yeah. There. What's the root cause as opposed to just yeah. band-aiding it? Right. It, yeah. It's, it's gotta be something bigger going on. And it, it, it manifested itself later in my mind as my autoimmune disease that hit me about five years ago. That means that they don't have any idea why something happened to you. That's what that means. And they just say your body tried, just decided to turn on itself, which I don't agree with that either. And so it's going to find another way out somehow. And it did. And I got really, really sick. And I had what's called poly autoimmunity, which means you're allowed to have more than one problem at a time <laughs> and multiple um, issues or quote unquote labels or diagnoses. But in my mind, they're all caused from the same thing, which is underlying inflammation in the system because you're overrun with toxins that you can't get out. And so it's very simple, fundamental process for me that I've discovered through my own journey of suffering because I had to rescue myself. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I tell people because medicine tried to, but they damn near killed me in the process. I'd like to think not on purpose, but by the thought process they were going into by attacking tissue, mm -hmm. which in and of itself, I hate the mindset of attacking something because that automatically reframes healing. That's why this I gravitate was through chemo, towards... right? Yeah, what's that? Was this through chemotherapy? Is that what you mean? Yeah, it was through mm -hmm. chemo. Well, I mean, that was the cancer part. Okay. years ago they did the chemo but here with this one it was typical uh, antibiotics medications multiple surgeries let's just kill things let's cut stuff out let's yeah. squash down the symptoms and it wasn't working and you know it was just the thought process of how they know to look at the body and they were isolating different symptoms or systems and i was like this is not working i'm getting worse. And I came very close to dying. And I felt like I wanted to die, which was a big thing for me, I kind of gave up. And I realized that I had to pull myself out of this thing on my own, because nobody else was going to do it, which means this, Perry, you have to start thinking completely different than anybody else is looking at anything. Because if you keep going, and you keep doing the same things, I mean, you're thinking the same way, and it's not working. 
So I flipped the switch. I went 180. And then I just started to ask questions of why in the hell can't my body get better? It's got to be missing something, right? They're putting everything you can think of. Here's the way I was thinking. They're putting everything you can think of into my body to try to help it. Mm, they were I working on the, this is it, what you're they're about working to say. On the supply side, right? As opposed to what needs to get out. Right. What's already in there that's trying to get out that mm, might be stuck. stuck in there. Yeah. Right. And I said, could it really be that simple? And over the years, I realized, yes, it absolutely can yeah. be that simple. That's <laughs> why you miss it because it's right in front of you. And then people say to me all the time when I teach them lymphatic work, there's no way it could be that simple. I'm like, who said so? <laughs> yeah, it, it probably is. You've missed a basic and a fundamental and the one system that I was not paying any attention to whatsoever was the lymphatic system. Well, neither were any of your medical professionals. And I think that's why I alluded to the conversation right at the start of the podcast where, yeah, we have got all the science, but it really is catching up with what nature has always had there, but we're just not supporting those multi-systems. And the lymph is a huge one. Um, one of the reasons why I was excited to bring you here was to talk about the gut but I know lymph is your thing yeah. and I know that they're connected, but I don't know how. And one of the things that kept coming up for me is I've written a book about hypermobility and I started talking about how hypermobility and gut issues are related. And man, I got this huge influx of people messaging me saying, please tell me more about the gut. I want to know more about the gut. And I realized I knew nothing. And I was like, I'm going to do a whole podcast series on the gut. And I really want to bring Dr. Perry in because I think the lymph and the gut must have some serious intertwined mechanisms because it's ultimately getting rid of stuff we don't want anymore, right? Yeah, hundred percent. In my mind, it's impossible to have a problem with one and not have a problem with the other. Impossible. Which came first? Yes, it can go either way. That you can have a gut problem that comes a lymph problem, a lymph problem that comes a gut problem because the body can do whatever the hell it wants to do. It doesn't have to make any sense to you at all, but. If you think about it, if I step back and I think logically, all right, uh, it's the gut. First of all, most people have gut issues. If you're yeah. alive on this planet, you probably got one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right? so glad you said that. It's actually something I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I say it tongue in cheek, but I'm not kidding you. People say, how do you know you have a gut problem? I'm like, because you're breathing. That's how you have a gut problem. Because I know the onslaught of what it has to deal with every day, particularly in the westernized world, you're putting things in your body that don't belong there. Yeah. And your body's going to pay the price for it. And so with the gut, I mean, we could talk for days about the gut, but the biggest thing with the takeaway is this, is that it's the main part of your immune system. So they think that 70 to 80% of your immune system resides in your gut. So right then and there, you automatically know if you have any disease process or chronic pain process or inf inflammatory process, I know you got a gut problem because that's where it resides. And then nature's really smart. She knows that, well, if that's where most of my immune system lives, let me pack that region with a lot of lymphatics that are part of my immune system. And that's called your gut associated lymphoid tissue in your gut. And so you have it in the small intestine, you got it throughout the whole um, intestinal tract. And if stuff breaks through the gut lining, the first system that's there to greet it, to try to protect you is the lymphatics. That, that's the first go-to. And if something gets into the lymphatics, its job is to try to kill it bacteria, parasites, fungus, viruses, cancer cells, you name anything you don't want inside of your body, even old dead cells that have died from the gut lining, they have to get out through there, everything. And if it gets overloaded, and it, it's just, it's too much of a burden on it. And people say, how does that happen? Same thing. Life does it. Yeah. <laughs> toxic right? world that we're living in a toxic world and so then uh, it gets overloaded and then all of the toxins stay in the gut but even if they make their way through the lymphatic system the lymphatic system goes everywhere so you can migrate 
inflammatory processes from the lymphatics into any other part of the body you want. It can send it to your knee if it wants. It can send it to your hip if it wants. So usually it'll send it to the area where you've had some prior uh, physical or emotional trauma or vulnerability because nature picks the weak link to go after because that's a smart play. And it can even migrate through your into your brain through the lymphatics. So, so gut is everything. So when that's where I do an assessment on people manually assessing the gut which a lot of people don't do anymore mm -hmm. is that you just put your fingers around the gut and around the navel and around the lymph. And I push there and I watch for your response. If you hate me and you want to mm -hmm. run away or you want to punch me in the face, I already know mm -hmm. you got a significant gut inflammatory lymphatic system problem that we need to take a look at. But here's what people need to know. You can't isolate lymph issues. You can't just go after the gut and fix the lymph. You have to do the whole system from yes. head to toe. There's no isolated lymphatic work in my world that doesn't exist. Because sometimes people, they're like, I'm going to change how I eat and I'm going to do X, Y, Z for my guts. But I think probably the missing link is then they don't look at their lymph system in combination with all the good stuff that they're doing for their gut and their gut issues persist. I see that time and time again. I mean, I speak from personal experience where I tried absolutely everything for my gut and I still had the worst gut on the planet. Exactly. That happens a lot. First of all, because everybody tries to do the standardized gut protocol. If it works for one gut, it works for all. Completely wrong. Not, a, not anywhere near close. Why? Because they're different guts. Each gut has its yeah. own story to tell based on who's carrying it around. And yeah. most gut programs, like I said before, are on the supply side. You know, they throw a bazillion supplements down your throat, right? Which is usually too much for a gut that can't handle anything to even, you can't even absorb the good stuff, right? Yeah. And, and so they're working on the front end and the back, the back end is still clogged and still stuck. So it, it can't do anything with what you're putting in there. It's, it's, it can't absorb the nutrients that you're putting in. And I started to think about that for a moment as well. It, you know, it, sometimes getting better is not what you start doing, but what you stop doing. Yeah. So I said, stop putting everything in and try to get some stuff out. So I thought about it logically. Okay. One of my mentors said this phrase that stuck out with me. Chronic disease only occurs when you lose the ability to make new cells that work. Can you I'm say, say again. that one more time? Chronic yeah. disease only occurs when you lose the ability to make new cells that work. Because if you can make new cells that work, you wouldn't stay sick. Mm -hmm. You follow? So then that begs the question, what do you need to make a new cell that works? Right? Well, you need energy, of course. Right? And then that comes from oxygen. It comes from nutrients and what we eat. But you need two things primarily for cells to work. I'm going to make it like an a b thing you need nutrients to go in and then they need to go in that not just go in i don't care if they go in that's important but they can they get to their target can they reach the cell or not because if yeah. they can't reach the cell it doesn't matter so i need nutrients in and i need waste or toxins out so if you've got too much waste inside of you already nutrients can't get to their target because everything's surrounded by waste. And then here's what people need to realize. Everything that you put in that's good eventually becomes waste. Mm, All the great stuff that month. you take right now becomes toxic when it can't get out. So oh, I don't care wow. how great you eat. It's, it's better than eating crappy. But you need to go the the drainage sides first, they call it in osteopathic medicine. They have a phrase called drainage precedes supply drainage precedes supply. So before your supply side, you have to drain the toxins first, then you've got mm. the mixture. And I found that everybody's doing the front end. Nobody's doing the back end. And if they're doing the back end, they're doing like a, a liver cleanse or a gallbladder cleanse or a kidney mm -hmm. cleanse or stuff like that. I'm going to say, that's great. But you're, what about the lymph? You need to work that yeah. as well. And that's when it 
that's when it hit me that I've been working my whole life in healthcare to figure out why stuff doesn't work or why it doesn't stick. Cause all these therapies are great. They all work. Dirty little secret is every therapy works for somebody, but here's, here's the reason why it doesn't work for everyone, because it's not just the therapies that you do is the order that you do them in. Mm. You follow? Can you give the me an order example? that you do them in determines how well they work. That's why every gut protocol can't be the same because I can't do A, B, C to you because you may need C, Y, Z. You may need a completely different combination mm -hmm. of things in order for it to work. And that was the underlying thing that I was looking for. So a case in point, A is nutrients in, B, toxins out. You can do that all day long and not get anywhere. You actually should go what B, if, A. <laughs> what if I do B and then A? Yeah. You get completely different results, even though they're still A and B. Because yeah. in physiology, what you did before what you just did changes what you get. That's relationships. That's how complex systems work with each other. That's how ecological systems work together. Input here changes output over here right but if i flip those around i get a completely different end result even though they're the same ingredient so i'm almost done i'll say this like i think about making a, a recipe a cake right a lot of therapies in the world today people just do a ton of therapies and they throw it all at you in one shot and see what sticks because they're all supposed to be good well, first of all, maybe this is too much and your nervous system can't handle it and it just shuts down and doesn't do anything. And it says, I'm going to stay right here. I'm not going to do anything because it's too much. And then we hope that it sticks. So it's like a recipe where you throw everything in the bowl in one shot and mix it together. Very few recipes turn out well like that. If you follow a recipe, they usually tell you, put these 3D ingredients in a bowl over here and mix it together put these over here and mix it together and then put those two together. Yeah. And then you think to yourself, why the hell am I going to do that? It's all the same thing. No, it's yeah. not. No, it's completely it's chemistry. Different. <laughs> it's chemistry. It, it, no, it's just interactions. That's how the body yeah. works. That's physiology. That's how you're like, man, your cake came out way better than mine. And right. So that's how you have to think. That's how I want people to really understand why stuff might not work because in modern medicine first of all we don't think of the bigger picture we isolate down we do reductionist Systems. thinking where you bring everything down to how one individual cell works and you look at it of how it works in a petri dish and i'm like that's really nice but guess what that doesn't help me one bit because first of all when i put that cell back in a living human being everything's off the table. And then when that cell has to interact with a couple of other trillion ones, what you just found doesn't mean anything to me. Zero. Right? You have to start somewhere and look at how a cell works. I give you that. But you also have to look at what happens when you put it in with all the other systems. And here's, here's where I'll stop for a second. It matters who you put the cell in. Yeah. Our history counts for so much. If I put the same cell in me, it's going to be different than if I put the same cell in you. Why? Because all the other cells have a different story that they're going to tell that cell that they need to be on the lookout for. That's your culture. That's your environment. That's epigenetics. Dr. Perry, I just want to say as a quick side note that your passion is so important, especially when talking about these topics, because sometimes it can be a little bit like um, trying to change people's minds is a light way of putting it. And that can be quite difficult, especially when we are looking at people that have come from a more traditional training in terms of medicine. Um, in ter one of the questions that I get all the time around gut, and I never know how to answer this because goodness knows I have been through every extreme diet under the sun and with very little success, <laughs> but people right. do want to know what should I eat? What should I be avoiding? You know, is it true that I should avoid dairy? And is it true that I should be cutting out gluten? And, and um, I'd like to hear your opinion on, I know that we've kind of talked about uh, switching the A's and B's 
And I am so grateful that you actually educated us on that. And I want to get back to that switch in a minute and talk especially about how we can prioritize the B. But can we just for a brief moment touch on the A to give people some insight as to what your opinion is around the context of diet? Oh, boy. That's like talking (laughs) about pain, right? I'm talking about religion. (laughs) Well, I have a joke that I tell people easy to tell you on the internet, don't talk about politics or religion, because you're going to get some polarization, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And then I added nutrition to that topic. Yeah, 100%. Because everybody's got their own opinion on it, right? And but here's the dirty little secret. Every (laughs) diet works for someone and every diet works for a little while. Right. You need variation, variability and variety. You need different types of things into your system. In my opinion, if you do all just one thing, you become less resilient and more vulnerable. Right. And I think my one of my dear friends, Dan John, said once, what's the best dieting advice he gives to people? First of all, he said, stop eating like a five year old, which means just stop eating the crap. And when people say, what is that? He says, you already know what it is. Every human knows what it is because every diet book tells you that. Just clean that up first. And then that's going to be a big win for you, right? All the junk food and the processed foods and things like that. But I don't really give nutritional advice to people because it's 100% individual. Okay. I'm so glad you said that. One person may do well on keto and another person will feel absolute. And it's the worst thing you could ever do. hundred percent. And same thing with intermittent fasting. Not everybody should be intermittent fasting, depending on where you are. It doesn't mean that at some point you might not be able to, it just might not be what you need for who you are in the moment you're in. That's called context, right? But then you have to ask yourself, why is the human body so reactive to things that you stick in it? Like, why the hell should not be able to eat whatever I want that's halfway decent, healthy? Because you have an underlying inflammatory process in the body. So for me, I'm like, I'm still going to go after the same fundamental thing of the lymphatics before I begin to tell, tell into your nutrition. But yeah, I, that's one that I'll tell people. Uh, start with basics and fundamentals first of not eating like a five-year-old. And then uh, making sure you're hydrated and then we'll see how you feel from there. But I'll tell people all the time that if you can do every diet in the world that you want, but if you've got stagnated lymph, you ain't going to get very far. Yes. And, and same, that brings, same thing with your gut. That brings me back to the switch of the A and B. Cause when you were talking uh, about the switch and how the, the order matters, I suddenly had a little flashback to my parents have this house in Portugal and every time we leave the swimming pool gets really gross. So when we come back, we drain the swimming pool, we jet wash it, and then we put the clean water in. And while you were talking, I was like, oh my goodness, what everyone is trying to do is put the clean water on top of the dirty old sludgy water that's full of the bugs. (laughs) And um, can you give us some practical tools for our listeners? What can we do to get that bee happening to get that detox situation going in our body so that we are more able to assimilate the nutrients that we provide our bodies. Yeah. See how a wonderful, simple analogy like that makes sense. The human physiology is the same exact thing. I mean, I always joke around. It's not rocket surgery. It's not really complicated. I mean, medicine likes to make it look that way because it makes them look more important, but it's really simple. Right. And you think about that pool analogy. Well, your body's the same way. My program is called um, Body Aquarium Lymphatic Mojo. So yeah. Mojo means magic. That's why I chose that word, because it's the magic of making a huge difference in somebody's life. It's almost kind of like voodoo in a way where you're like, what just happened? And then they want me to explain it. And I'm like, honestly, I don't know. I don't even know all the answers of why it happened. It just did. And we're discovering more as we go along. It's kind of magical. It's also the magic of knowing that you can become empowered to make a difference in your life with something so simple. But body aquarium is referencing a fish tank, kind of like a swimming pool that if you don't have a filter system on the fish tank or your swimming pool, it gets all toxic and fungus because the fluid's not moving and getting filtered out. The fish die which are your cells. So your cells die. Fish can't breathe, right? You ever looked inside a fish tank when there's low oxygen, 
the yeah. fish are struggling. That's exactly what your cells do when the water's crappy. Mm. And the same with your swimming pool. You got to get in there and clean it out. And if you don't, what takes hold? Bacteria, parasites, fungus, dis-ease takes hold. And then you think to yourself, well, just well, empty the water and clean the filters. Good to go. Yeah. Right. And that's exactly <laughs> how that's not difficult. And but it's the order that makes a difference. So if you think about that filter system in the beginning, you know, water that doesn't move stays stagnant. So movement is a huge player in lymphatic health. And people always ask me, what's the first step towards improving your lymphatics? My answer is always the same. Awareness of how important it is, is the first step. Because you can't, you personally, can't change something until you become aware of it. And then once you become aware of lymph, you say, oh, this is really important. I don't know why anybody didn't tell me about this stuff before. They asked me that question. Why didn't somebody tell me this stuff before if it was so important? And my answer is the same. That's a really good question. You should ask them that because they should have been telling you that. Uh, they're, they're starting to come around. So movement is one of the biggest things you can do for lymphatics. And then people say, what kind of movement? Yes, is the answer. Does move more of yourself more often, more ways, more environments. Just big fancy way to say move differently than you are now. Walking is one of the best ways to clear lymph. Breathing from your diaphragm is another fantastic to way to move lymph because breathing through your diaphragm changes pressure in the body and pressure moves fluids, right? And it just so happens when you move through your diaphragm, you move all the organs and you increase pressure in the largest lymph node in your body that sits two to three inches above your navel, right in the center of your abdomen. And it's usually stuck. And then that's where you have the most inflammation from your leaky gut and inflammation right there. So you have to clear that region. And then this is where people tell me, but doc, I do diaphragm breathing all the time. And I move all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, why would I still need to do lymphatic work? Here's the reason. Because that should be enough. But it's no longer enough. Now you have to get in there and manually move the lymph because it's too obstructed. It's too overloaded, right? It's like taking the water out of the pool, putting it back in, but not changing the filter system. You, ha you have to go in and manually move some things. And then once you move the area, what I'll tell people how it's pretty simple um, to, to move those areas, then the breathing and the movement completely changes. So that's why I tell people in my world, you never, ever, ever breathe or do movement until you do my quick lymphatic reset, which I'll share with your people today, if you would like me to, oh, that please. makes a difference, awesome. makes a complete difference in your results, right? When I started to do lymphatic work, within one month, I lost 30 pounds of body fat, swelling and inflammation that I've wow. been struggling to lose for years. But people always tell me that your your skin changed the yeah, you uh, look incredible. Change. Honestly. And that happens because you wear on the outside how toxic you are on the inside, the skin totally. shows everything. The, the most of the lymph sits beneath your skin. And so it'll manifest in the skin. And if you're toxic on the lymph, the skin can show it. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the telltale signs that I look for in people to be able to spot how the system might be working. A lot of people look at posture. I don't look at posture. I look at skin. I look at face and I try to see mm -hmm. what the inside of the body is telling me because in my world, posture will change when you change the fluid dynamics first. So I flip the order around. Yeah. Just as a quick detour, could you just touch upon the fact you had talked about how much weight you lost after you started doing lymphatic drainage? And it frustrates me that a lot of people in the fitness community, especially online, say weight loss is about a calorie deficit. But I've been learning about breathing and a lot of time it's at CO2 balance and listening to you speak. It's a lot about lymphatic drainage as well, because mm -hmm. you it's a protective mechanism to have those layers of fat. It's not necessarily a calories in, calories no. out. And that's such a misleading statement. I think it makes a lot of people feel like they're not doing enough, but that's almost adding to the problem in some ways. It can be a piece of the puzzle for many, right? And it can be a helpful target for them to have something to track for sure. 
but not not all calories are created equal. We should already know that, right? So it comes down to a calorie from a Twinkie, for instance, isn't the same as a calorie from broccoli. So you have to be careful there. And um, so the body is really smart. First of all, it, people get puffy and bloated and swollen. That's a protective response. What happens is the body swells the container for protection. It doesn't do it because it's bored. There's no accident behind it. So if you have a lot of toxins in your system, one way to dilute the toxins is to add more water, add more fluid. It's just like having uh, something in a container that's really, really thick and uh, viscous mm -hmm. to it. And then in order to thin it, you do what? You swell the container. You add the same toxins to a bigger container, and then it's not as toxic because it's spread out. Okay? Ah, so, so clever. The body, yeah. <gasps> so the body goes boom, 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 because it's trying oh, to make space genius. for the toxins. Okay. And body, body fat is where your body stores toxins it can't deal with, that it can't get out and it can't handle because it has to move it away from the vital structures of the body. So then it says, okay, we can't handle the amount of toxins that you have right now. So let's put them aside and we can deal with them later. Right. And then it swells the container and adds more body fat. So fat surrounds toxins. That's where it sits. That's why a lot of people don't lose weight when they exercise or starve themselves, because when you exercise, you create more toxins. You break down yeah. your body when you exercise and you should. You destroy cells. So you can, here's the thing. So you can rebuild them and grow new ones and become stronger. But what happens but then, if you lose the ability to make new cells at work? Because you can't even handle the ones you've already got. And we need to get rid of the old ones that the body's just broken down. Right. So cells die every day, all the time, and they need to get out. If they can't get out, you also become toxic to your own cells that are automatically dying. So when you try to burn body fat, what are you burning off? You're burning, you, you release toxins into the body. Yeah. And the body is already full of them. So then that's the person who may, may feel worse with training, and they often do. Or as the person who notices progress, and then uh, later they put that weight back on plus double the amount. Mm, Why? So because the body common. says, okay, well, I laid down 20 pounds to try to protect it. You didn't listen. So now I'm going to give you 40. So it rebounds back and it's, it's making you that way for protection. It, it's, it's, it has to do the best it can in the moment it's in with what it's got ultimately to protect you and it swells. So that's why me, I, I know everything you could possibly think about, about training and fitness and nutrition. Cause I've been doing it since I was 14, but I still couldn't lose weight because I was too toxic. And when I flipped that order around, then my system said, thank you very much. You finally figured this stuff out. It's about damn time. So here, here it comes. Now we're going to let it go. Right. And then I feel better now than when I was 24. I move better than when I was 24. So it, it's fantastic, just a little flip that you have there. But you always have to ask why the body is doing what it's doing. And ultimately, it's for protection that it has yeah. to do. So swelling the container. That's why a lot of people who begin lymphatic work, when I teach my workshops, they say, I lost five pounds like it, of just swelling, inflammation, toxins, body fat, all those sorts of things, just within a few days or a week from, from doing that, because now you're allowing the physiology of your body to work the way it's designed to by removing those obstructions that are in the way, because it, it already knows what it needs to do. You don't have to teach it what to do. It just need to help it do what it's designed to do. Does that make sense? Totally. And that can be a huge break in relationship to uh, your progress. Plus it's going to make a significant difference in your hormone concentration because lymphatics transport hormones and the liver synthesizes all the sex hormones in your body. And it just so happens that the liver produces up to 50% of the lymphatics into your entire system. So Whoa. if you have a lymphatic system problem, you got a liver problem. If you got a liver problem, you got a hormone problem. And then it's a knock on effect. Bing, like bing, dominoes. bang, bang, boom. I mean, it yeah. just, it goes down. So all these issues are sometimes three or four levels removed from what we're chasing. 
So that's where the history and the stories and touching the human body so I can feel the tissues and watch your reaction, right? Because very few people come in to me saying, Doc, I got to see you today. You know, my sternum and my gut are killing me. If they have celiac disease or something, they might, but this is the people who come on in and they complain of shoulder pain or back pain or, you know, leg pain. <clears throat> and they point to where it hurts. Right. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to check it out there, but guess what? I'm going to put my finger everywhere else too. And I'm going to see what hurts that you had no idea hurts. And that's where I'm going to find my answer because listen, pain is an awareness signal. You already know where that hurts, but that's why you have pain. So your brain yeah. can say, take a look over here. There might be something going on over here. Pain, 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 pain. But that doesn't mean that that's where the problem started mm -mm. from where it originated. And that's why from. you stop chasing pain. Exactly. You, you treat it. it more so because you expect me to treat it. So I do it more for your mental anxiety than anything else. But what I'm going to look for is the pain that you didn't know that you had anywhere. Yeah, it's always been there. You just haven't been aware of it yet. And that's when I go and I press in the abdomen and you go, Oh, my God, doc, that hurts worse than my back. Ooh, and then they and say, that's the cause. <laughs> Yeah, they say, I had no idea. Yeah. That's the one I'm going after. That's the okay. one I'm going. After. So with equipped with this incredible uh, foundation of knowledge, now let's do the plan B and figure out what what can you give us practically to do on our bodies to initiate the change to help us feel better. Perfect, great question. So I'm going to introduce some simple practices that I learned from studying Eastern medicine and Qigong, and it's it's slapping and tapping techniques mm -hmm. they've been doing that for a couple thousand years so the way i look at it if it works for them for that long i'm gonna give it a shot but i'm gonna tie it in so you understand why it works from a physiological level right? let's go back to how smart nature is nature knows that you need to put your lymph in, movement moves lymph correct now in your body you have what they call lymph nodes lymph nodes are like small little tiny toilets everywhere that i tell people like stuff goes in, you flush it, it goes out. So they're killing stations, right? Like little tiny mini kidneys. And each time toxins go from one node, the immune system kills it, passes to another lymph node, and we kill a little bit more and a little bit more. And you got six to 700 of those suckers working to try to kill as much as it can. And they develop in what we call clusters, where you have groups of them. Nature put most of your lymph node clusters around the joints of your body that need to move the most. What? Yeah. So you have a cluster around your shoulder joint. You have a cluster around your hip joint. You have a cluster around the back of your knee. You have a cluster in your abdomen. You have a cluster at the bottom of the neck and a cluster at the top of the neck. And we call those the big six, the primary, those are the primary joints of your body that have to move the most. And they're usually the ones that move the least. Why? Because nobody's moving yeah. or they do the same kind of movement all the time. They don't do different movement. So the soft tissue was adapted to just one line of force. So fluid moves around lines of force. So you get stagnant because you move the same all the time, or you don't move enough. Right. And then those are the areas with when you sit, you you flex your knee. So the back of your knee becomes clogged. You sit. So the front of your groin, you flex in the hip. So that gets clogged. I slump in my chair. I tilt my pelvis backwards and I slump in my abdomen and I shut that flow off. I round my shoulders forward and I shut off the arm. I jut my head forward. And I shut off the bottom of the neck and the top of the neck and I lose mobility and all those joints. And then not just the lymph gets stuck, but blood flow gets stuck because all those areas are primary pipes of arterial blood, which brings mm -hmm. nutrients to cells and venous blood, which brings waste away from cells and also lymphatic fluid and then they cluster around big groups of nerves so they all travel together so what you're doing is you're we call these choke points you're choking off what i'm choking off my supply side 
because nutrients can't get to the tissue because the artery is obstructed. And I'm choking down the waist side because the vein gets stagnated and the lymph gets stagnated. And when they get stagnated and nerves can't get those things, nerves get really ticked off. And how do nerves tell you when they're ticked off? They hurt you. That's called pain, right? Most nerve pain is from hypoxia, not enough oxygen into the tissue because your fish tank and your swimming pool sucks. Mm -hmm. it's, it's stuck full of gunk. So oxygen can't even get anywhere. I don't care how much you're breathing. It still can't yeah. get there because your tank is toxic. You follow? So that's what you got to do is clean your tank, clean the six, then move, then breathe. And then you're going to send me a message and go, what? That's the crazy. No way could it be that simple. You want to bet? So I'm going to teach them to you because okay. it, could, it. I'm going to show you these things. It's going to change your life. I'm not kidding you. And effective things don't have to be complicated. And one of the things that I've, I'm building this up, I'm building it up. What I found that when people see me, they've had so many things done. I find a fundamental basic mist somewhere. A basic and fundamental is overlooked or dismissed. This is about as basic as you can get. Nutrients in, waste out. But you have, here we go back to order. You got to do it in the order I teach you in or it won't work as well. That's why people say, can I just go get a massage or can I just jump up and down on something? Yes, you can, but you can't just arbitrarily rub body tissue and expect to get the same result because you won't. Because mm -mm. you're not working with how fluids move in the body based on pressure. Right. Working and rubbing tissue is great. But what I'm trying to tell people is the order that you do it in is going to make a difference on how well it works. And I'm going to stand by that until I'm dead. So I'm going to teach you the order. Okay. All right. I'm going to write this down. Yeah. <laughs> I just think this is going to be really good tonight. you are watching can be able to see, and I'm going to explain it. Now, all the lymphatics in your body drain to a point at the collarbone. So above and below the collarbone is pretty much where the lymph drains into the vein system of the body. Okay. It's, it's in what they call the subclavian. Sub means below. Clavian is for clavicle or collarbone below there. So it all drains into the venous system. So it's important to note that the lymphatic system is also the second cardiovascular system. They work yeah. together. Yeah. So it your cardiovascular together. health is only as healthy as your lymph. Your heart is only as healthy as your lymph. It's so crazy, if you're trying to go harder. Yeah. If you're trying to go harder, faster, stronger, longer as a competitive athlete, working your limp is going to make you run like a damn gazelle. It's going to make you go really, really fast. I'm very so excited everything... about this. I don't run well. <laughs> <laughs> you will after this. Everything drops to the collarbone because that's the lowest pressure in the lymphatic system. Right. So that's spot number one above and below the collarbone. And I'm going to explain that in a second, but I need to help you understand the premise of how fluids move in the body based on pressure. In physics, they call it hydrodynamics, where high pressure of fluids automatically goes to low pressure of fluids. Right? So think of a water dam where you've got water all on one side, no water on the other side. Yeah. If you open the dam doors, right? the water automatically goes to the low side. That's what your body is trying to do all the time. So everything okay. in your body is trying to drain lymphatic wise to the base of your neck, right? So that's why we always clear there first because I have to open up the damn doors. Got it? So one of the things we're gonna do is, this is spot one. I tell people to take their hand, right, the whole hand, and it can be on the left side first or the right side first. It doesn't really matter, but you're always going to do both sides. I want you to rub with your hand above and below and on your collarbone. The whole thing above it, on it and below it. Just rub about 10 times up and down. I don't care which direction you rub. It doesn't matter. 
And then after you rub it, I want you to take your hand. I want you to slap your hand on above and below the collarbone with the whole hand in one shot. So you're getting the whole thing and do it about 10 times. And people say, how hard should you hit? Well, don't hurt yourself, but how about you hit different ways? Light one time, yeah. hard one time, slow one time, fast one time. That's life, right? Yeah, variety. Variety, variation, variability. We call it the three V's. That's my friend Joanne Elpenston teaches that. Or I like to say, how about you just do it different? And then go to the other side. So rub above, the, uh, above on, and below the other collarbone 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then slap 10 times. This is very powerful technique from Qigong. That's spot number one. Now, spot number two, so what you're going to do is you're going to put your finger right at the top of your neck, right behind the angle of the jaw, mm -hmm. right there. There's a little space right in there. That's the largest lymph node in the neck. Yeah. That's spot number two. Okay. You got the left side and oh, you got the right tender. side. Yeah, it is for most people because that's usually um, a lot of stagnation that sits in there. All you're going to do now is same thing. You're going to go up there and I want you to rub with a couple of fingers right at the top of the neck, up and down 10 times. Right. Now, this one, you have to be careful because some people might not like the tapping or they feel uncomfortable or it feels like they make them a little bit dizzy. If you don't want to tap here, you can just double the rub, but take a couple of fingers and just tap right in that spot 10 times. If you don't like that, just double your rubs. Go up and down like that. Okay. It feels very nice. I have to say, this is yeah, very it's really simple. All you're doing is just removing some of the blockages. I tell people, the lymph is ninety percent water, so I want you to think about how water flows in nature. If you had some rocks blocking a stream, you just remove the rocks, and then the stream starts to flow. That's pretty I much what amazing you're doing. already. I feel like a rush went to the top of my head. Yeah. It was Plus, very subtle. Like, you massively change circulation of Ooh, blood from your yeah. head, right? Plus you stimulated, you stimulated your vagus nerve like crazy because that's where it runs. Um, and then we're going to do number three. So that's number one. And then number two is at the top. Number three is right at the shoulder joint where it connects to your pec muscle. So if you have your pectoral muscle in front, and you have the shoulder there, it's right where they meet. And that's the spot where many women have their issues when they have uh, breast cancer or mm -hmm. lymph issues in the axillary region. So you wanna make sure you're more on your pec and your shoulder. And so you're in that, you feel how your shoulder is round yeah. and then it comes forward and it's not round, mm -hmm. that spot. So Got rub it. there. So you rub there the 10 times, the bigger the area you cover, the better. And then also slap that 10 times. And then do the same on the other side. So you always even out the sides. You always do both sides. Okay. You rub 10 times and then you slap 10 times. All right. Now, number four is because I can't show you here because I'm sitting, but I'll walk you through it is the abdomen. Okay. No, you can do this standing or you can do it seated. Just don't do it while you're driving because your hands will be <laughs> off. Be okay. This one, I want you to put one hand on your belly button yeah. and put the other hand above your belly button. So they're right over just so that, so right there, they're stacked on top of each other. And all I want you to do is I don't care which way you rub. You can rub. Most people like to go up and down or side to side. It's up to you. You can even do circles. You can do one hand left, one hand right. I just want you to rub 10 times, right? And then now I want you to take your hands and you slap your abdomen 10 times. Yep, don't stop breathing. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's yeah. number four. Yep, that's right. Now, number five is going to be the crease of the groin in the front, where when you sit, you have this crease in your groin. Yeah. 
yeah. you're going to rub, right? You're going to rub across the creases. It can be most people like to go up and down on them, but you can go with the crease of the groin as well. And then I want you to hit there 10 times, but I really need you to be careful where you hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to go easy there. Okay. <laughs> So you take the whole hand and you slap there. I'm going to tell people a little extra. That's one of the most important places that you can work in the human body to free up restricted blood flow. That's so good. I'm really excited about learning everything. this. That, that area is so, so neglected. Mm -hmm. So that area gets stuck a lot when anybody who has issues in the, in the legs, mm -hmm. like pain in the foot, pain in the knee, swelling in the ankle, stuff like that. Because okay. Everything that you're tapping here has to get to the neck. Yeah. Right? Got to get there. Now that's number five. Number six is behind the knee. So you can either sit down or you can uh, bend over a little bit. I prefer you to hinge at your hips and bend your knees a little bit to protect your lower back. I want you to rub your hands over the back of both knees mm -hmm. up and down. Yeah. And then I want you to slap the back of your knees 10 times. That's a major point they teach you in acupuncture and acupressure to alleviate low back pain because it's a powerful acupressure point, but it's also a big blood flow point right there. So you just did the big six in order. You always have to do them in that order to release pressure. Now, after you've done those, then we want to get you moving a little bit, right? So people always ask me, is rebounding good for the lymphatics? And my answer is always, yeah, but it's going to be way better if you do the big six and then you rebound, which means jumping up and down. And nature gave you built-in rebounders. They're called your calves. <laughs> so all I want you to do now, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just stand up oh, and... It go uh, have your feet about shoulder width apart or a comfortable stance. And then all you're going to do is go up and down on the balls of your feet, bouncing up and down a little bit. You don't have to actually leave the ground completely. I wouldn't recommend it for people that don't do a lot of this training because it can be hard yeah. on the knees and the hips and the back. So keep the balls of your feet there towards the front and then just let your heels come up bounce up and down like that. And I only want you to breathe in and out through your nose, not your mouth, because when you breathe through your nose, you're going to move your diaphragm more and just don't stop breathing and just shake your arms out and do that for about 20 to 30 seconds. And then that's the daily big six lymph reset. If you did that every single so day, easy. Every life, you're going to change do that. your life. Get out the shower, rub yourself down real quick on the big six, jump up and down for a few seconds job done and you're ready to go. That's it. And when you get good at it, it only takes you about a minute to do it. And it, you can awesome. do it before you do physical exercise. You can do it after you do physical exercise. But I am going to tell people this. I don't want you to negate how powerful what I just showed you is. So many people that are listening, depending on how long you've been suffering from something or how long you've had maybe autoimmune disease or chronic pain, just from doing that, you may experience what's called a detoxification reaction. And it's normal and it's expected. And it's what I would like for you to have, actually, because that's where now that you unblocked those, your body has to get rid of them. So you're mm -hmm. going to start to feel a little bit worse before you get better. Not always. Some of you might not experience it, but that's okay. That's normal, too. But you may feel tired, fatigued, lethargic, headache, you know, like you just want to sleep for a couple of days. You may even notice some of your pain initially gets a little bit worse. Don't be alarmed because those are normal things that's going to happen. The only thing I'll tell you is one, make sure you keep yourself well hydrated because dehydration leads to stagnation of lymph and thicker blood, which is going to really struggle to get better overall. And number two, don't do this reset again until you start to feel just a little bit better, which might actually be a day or two from now. You have to give your body a little bit of a chance to catch up 
before you do it again, because if you keep throwing too much at it, it you're going to draw out the healing process. Okay. But just realize that that is the normal. And then this is, this is something that I tell people they should do every day, like brushing your teeth and you can make a significant and profound difference in your life or the life of someone that you love who's suffering. Dr. Perry, thank you so much for sharing this. Um, I, Honestly, every time I see you post about your lymphatic drainage course, I'm always like this close to booking. The only only reason why I haven't is because I'm up to my eyeballs in Z Health. <laughs> yeah, they'll Desperately do that. trying to make my way through so much video content because this stuff, I believe, really, without getting this stuff as the foundation, probably a lot of the nervous system stuff is is going not it's going to. Uh, what's the right word? It's going to not have the same impact unless we get this right first. So I'm so grateful for you sharing the big six. Thank you so, so much. Oh, you're very welcome. I think it's something that every single human being on this earth should know how to do to empower yourself. And it's such what I find is that so many people don't do things one, because they don't know where to start. Yeah. Two, they get so many things at once to do that they get overloaded and they just become immobilized or two or three, excuse me, people make things way more complicated than they have to be in the beginning. Right. And then if you want somebody to start to make some changes in your life, just make them a little simple in the beginning, what I call little tiny action steps, because little done every day, that's no longer little because we call those your habits and your behaviors. That's pretty much your life. So if you, if you do just this every single day, uh, all the other things that you'll notice will improve. Um, what I like about Z Health, one, they're very dear friends of mine, and Eric is probably one of the nicest human beings on the planet. Agreed. And uh, he's one of the few people that actually talks about the lymph a little bit. He's got a nice yeah, little he does. lymph pump, and he, he tells he tells you how to pump the lymph at the collarbone. So he, he, you're already ahead of the game there, and um, so that's that's a great great mix to do. Um, yeah, it's one but of still, my, I still, I still, it's massively on my radar to take your courses, Doctor Perry, because I. Well, feel, we'd love to have you. You know, we oh, we talk it, for sixteen <laughs> hours about lymph. If you thought this was cool. Uh, you oh, jump in that I know pool, this is just tip it. of the iceberg. I can't wait to dive very deep. All the podcasts that I've watched with you in it, I'm always left mind blown. Um, but I think the thing that I really want to, um, the thing that I really want to champion on this podcast is not only the people with extreme knowledge, but also the people that are just genuinely good people that are so humble and so down to earth and a lot of people I have to say with your knowledge and your respect in the community you know they're not as down to earth as you and Dr. Cobb you know so people like you just inspire me so much not only to be a better practitioner but also just to be a great person and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you're doing in this world and for all that you have done for me even in the short space of time that I've known you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm going to ditto that one right back at you for all the fantastic work that you're doing. And I can't believe that it's already been an hour. I think we hit what they call the flow state. <laughs> we totally did. It was such a pleasure. I actually had more questions planned for you. So with your blessing, it would be a real honor to have you back at some point. Um, but Dr. Perry, just before I let you go, would you like to just answer two questions? One, if you had the ability to give everyone on the planet a message somehow, either with a massive billboard or a text message to their phone, what message would you give the world? Well, it's the one that I share about pain. You know, that first of all, to realize that pain is not a punishment from your body. It's trying to protect you. And my definition of pain is this. And pain is a request for change. And People say change and what? Yes, is the answer. It just means do something a little bit. I know it's a long billboard. So I do, like it. <laughs> do something a little bit different than what you're doing now. And to piggyback off that, I'd like to end with something that was really transformational for me from a friend of mine, Bo, whose name was Dr. Bo Lotto. And he said, if you're trying to go from A to B, which is someplace different than where you are, right? The first step isn't B. 
the first step is just not a. What does that mean? Just do something different than you're doing now and you don't know what kind of magical place it's going to take you. It's just different than what you're doing now. And that's the first step. Not a, that would be the billboard. Oh, not a, I love that. Thank you so much. And then finally, where can people find out more about you? Oh, that's really simple. (laughs) (laughs) If if you type I think everyone should have that on the billboard. Just stop chasing pain should be the billboard in my opinion. Oh, trust me, that'll be up there in the background. Uh, (laughs) Just just type in stop chasing pain on the internet. I'm going to show up somewhere. Uh, I've been doing this stuff a long time, but that'll take you to my website, which is kind of ground zero central command for everything else that, that we do. You can explore around in there quite a lot. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Thank you for being such an amazing person. And thank you for coming on Love at First Science. Love being here. Thank you, everyone.